Hello everyone, my name is Hannah Collison from Inspired Creations and this is another of our free video tutorials. This time is the beautiful spring blossom. If you would like to join in and work along with the video, then these are the items you will need to have available. The little spray that we're going to be creating today, and we're going to start off by making the stamens using some cotton from your sewing kit. So the cotton I have is just a cream colour and it's a good idea to pop it into a cut glass or pot, something to stop it from rolling around the surface. And what we're going to do is just part two of your fingers slightly so that they don't go blue as you're wrapping this round. But the idea is to wrap this round about 10 or 15 times around both fingers. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and just cut it off the reel. And that way you've got all your loops together on your finger. Peel those off to reveal a large loop and then twist the center so that you form a figure of eight and fold one loop bundle over the other. So you get yourself a smaller loop, but it's quite thick. I'm going to insert a 28 gauge wire, which we've cut into three through the loop and at the halfway point on the wire, fold the two ends down so they meet like a hair grip. At the top where the cotton is, give it a good old twist round two, three times, just so that it secures the cotton to the wire. I've got some Nile green stem text tape, which when you stretch becomes tacky. You only need a small length for this. Scoop all the fronds of cotton to one side and then tape at the bottom, overlapping the base of the cotton a little way so that it is held in place and secured to the wire. And then use the tape to tape all the way down and pull off at the end. Just make sure that this part is nice and secure. Just find any tool that will go through the middle just to pull all the loops together to make them an equal size. And then find a, fair, a sharp bladed pair of scissors that you can cut through at the top like so. You've got some straggly ends on there, so if we neaten those off and use a sharp pair of scissors to trim using your thumb as a bit of a cutting guide. These offcuts are going into a pot so that they don't mess up your surface. And then you can just use your finger to open up the stamens. So the next step is to make the blossom itself. So I have a ball of flower paste about a centimetre in diameter. Give that a good warm up. Make sure there are no cracks. And then pinch out a point on one end. If you feel your paste is sticky, then use corn flour. The tool I'm using is a five six sided star tool. We're going to use the five star side which is where it's fat to start with and tapers to a point. The other side will give you a six petal flower. We want a five petal flower. Push the tool into the fat end of the paste to about halfway and press against it so that the indentations show when you remove the shape from the tool. Take a straight bladed pair of scissors and cut through those indentations as deeply as you have pressed in with the tool and open up the individual petals. This technique is called a pulled flower. It means that you can make different size flowers using the same tool rather than a cutter. So what I've done here is actually pinch sideways to create a point on the end of each petal and then 
turning my fingers so that my thumb is going to be positioned underneath the petal and my finger on top, I'm now going to go ahead and flatten each petal. Now this would be fine if you wanted to pop it in onto a, just a cake uh, that someone's, where someone's going to eat the flower, but we want to take this a step further so it's a lot finer. And what I'm going to use is a cocktail stick where I've taken just probably the top two millimetres off the point so that it doesn't poke into my shape. You want to rub your finger with corn flour, so this part of your finger is where you're going to lay each petal, where it's bony and kind of your knuckle part if you like. Pop each petal in turn on top of your finger and then rest the cocktail stick up at an angle so the point is reaching or pointing up to the ceiling. Press from the centre and roll outward across the knuckle of your finger. Use that as a pressure point to press against and then release the pressure and go ahead and do the other petals. This you may find each petal will stick if it does, you need to pop some corn flour on there to stop it from sticking to your finger. So go ahead and just from the center, roll out each petal. And then do the last one, rolling off the edge of each petal so that we get a nice wide shape and the texture from you'll get a texture from the cocktail stick as well so now we've got broader petals i'm going to take the same tool as i used before the same end the five-sided end push that back into the center but this time each raised ridge on the cutter on the tool is going to line up with the middle of each petal and press against so that not only are you hollowing out the center of the flower a little bit more, you're also creating a little vein marking with a little vein marking in the middle. Final preparation before we put the stamens in the center is to take a foam pad, drop this down into one of the holes, or if you haven't got one with holes, you can just pop it on the side, on its side. And then if you take a bone modeling tool, the fat end, and press it facing down, which is an unusual way of using the tool because normally we use it this way up, and press each petal in turn. And that will just give it a lovely little cup and make it look more blossom-like. Then you're ready to put your calyx in. So this is not calyx, the stamen. So this is what we made earlier. Push that in through the center from the front. Make it come out the back as centrally as possible. Feed that down. And before you get to the point where the tape disappears, you can just pop a little bit of glue where you began the taping. And give that a little twist to avoid it resisting too much. We don't want the petals to tear and tug that into place so that you've got about three quarters of a centimetre of stamens sticking out above the flowers. Pinch the stem between your finger and thumb and then maybe give it a little roll so that it comes down the stem a little way. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and cut in a fake calyx. So we've got a triangular indentation that's achieved by pressing or slightly closing the straight edge scissors against the paste. And that will give you something that you can color up green in a little while, and that will look like a calyx. I've just made two cuts, one on the top and turned it round and one on the bottom, only because I can't fit three on there, but you can put more in if you would like. So that is your completed blossom that's ready to colour later on. Next, we make the buds. So this is a half a centimetre diameter ball of flower paste coloured with a fuchsia pink paste. And then I'm just going to warm that up so it's crack free. So we've got a nice crack free ball. Pinch out the end so that you've got a cone shape. 
take a 28 gauge wire, which has been cut into three. So it's a third of a length of a wire and turn in a little hook at the end using your tweezers. Put a little bit of glue on the end of that and then go ahead and push that hooked end into the fat end of the cone that you've made. Use a pair of tweezers to pinch the base shut. Support the back of the bud and use the cutting wheel, I've used the small end of the cutting wheel, just to cut in three little cut lines and this will indicate where the petals are about to open. We now also want to cut in a fake calyx like we did with the flower. So again, position the scissors, close them up a little, press down onto the shape of perfection as well, and then just cut through a little bit so that it starts to open up at the top, but it's not fully open. Okay. The next step is to create the leaves. So I'm just going to turn my board over on the back. We'll reveal some ridged lines. There are other ways of doing this, but this is how I'm going to show you. So I've got myself set up ready for the leaves. I've got a leaf cutter. This is a garden rose veiner by Diamond Paste and Mold Company and a 28 gauge wire per leaf. So we take a small amount of paste, it's coloured with gooseberry green, and it's about a centimetre and a half in diameter. You don't want a huge amount per leaf because each time you roll this paste out, especially if you've give, added corn flour, you'll find that it will um, dry out very quickly. So this sausage paste of paste, first of all, what we're going to do is broaden the shape so that we know it's going to fit the width of the leaf. Just move my wires out of the way and then lengthen it to get the size that we need for the cutter but also to make it nice and thin. If you find it sticks to the rolling pin or the board then please just add corn flour and that should help. It is quite thin. Peel off the shape and turn it over that way you can see where the ridge is and you know where to line up and at the fattest point of the ridge place the bottom of the leaf cutter which is where the wire is going to go. Make sure it's central, give it a good press down and pull the excess paste from around. That can go back in a bag and be used later. And then just to help us a little bit to get a clean furry free shape, we can just rub our finger or palm across the shape whilst it's still in the cutter. Position the leaf itself with the ridge facing upwards across the length of your finger and then making sure that the wire is nice and straight Position that in the centre of the ridge that you've rolled, putting your finger and thumb over the ridge and pinching down a little bit. That pinching pressure and the fact that you're going to move your fingers up the leaf as you feel the end of the wire get pushed up, that should stop it from coming out on both sides. So my wire has actually gone into there and it hasn't poked out of the back. Using the garden rose banner, if you've got this one, it will have GR in the center. So on the left side, you've got an indented pattern. And when we push the paste through it, it will become a raised printed indent, raised texture. And the raised texture on a rose is on the back. And as the ridge is raised, then we want that on the back as well. So if I turn my ridge face down and place it into the left hand side of this cutter, close up making sure that the wire doesn't move and then press down nice and firm release the pressure and open up to reveal the texture that the veiner has created at this point we can bring in our foam pad and use the fat end of our bone modeling tool to thin the edges That will give it some movement and make it look more realistic. Take a little bit of your tape. Make sure it's stretched. Oh, 
having a bit of trouble with this one. And then if you take a little way down from the base where the paste is, that would just make it easier. Just twist it a couple of times so you know it's going to still move. And take down the wire by about two inches and that's your leaf done. Now we've made a flower, the leaf and the bud. The bud needs a little bit of tape. It doesn't need a long length. I can just use this little spare piece and show you how that's taped on. So a couple of twists and then we push that up. Just be careful because if your paste is still dry, your bud may pop off. So the idea is to make three buds, two flowers and three leaves, and then we're ready to colour. So to colour, I've used blossom tints or petal dust, and they're the dry powders that are found usually, be, usually in a screw pot like this or a flat one. Um, and I've used four colours for this particular flower. I've got fuchsia pink, plum, moss green and lemon yellow. So to start with, I can work on the pink. I mix my fuchsia pink and my plum together to get a nice pink shade. Fuchsia pink on its own is a bit sweetie-like and the plum is a little bit dull on its own as well. But the two mixed together uh, work quite well. So just take a brush, something with quite a few bristles on it, quite firm, and then just brush the tip to get a nice uh, pinkish tinge. Put that one aside and then you can go ahead and colour the flower as well. I normally like to dust over my flower tray, dusting tray, just so that I don't get too much colour onto my board and my other tools. So just brush the colour along the black back. Try not to catch the calyx cut area. Okay. Then you can turn the flower over and if you want to, you can put a little bit of colour into the centre. So just work the brush with a bit of colour, being careful not to break the petals. And the colour is going just in at the base of the petal and the base of the stamen centre. Okay. If you want to as well, you can catch a little bit of the pink on the green leaf. But just be aware that you don't want to mix the greens and the pinks together because you'll end up with brown. So once you've coloured all your blossoms and all your flowers, you're ready to colour the calyx on the back of the flower and blossom, uh, blossom bud and uh, also the leaf. So here I've just got a touch of moss green and lemon yellow going on just to give it a little bit of depth and interest. And I can do the same with my full blossom. So it's just the area that you cut at the back to make the faux calyx. And then you can colour, maybe entirely up to you how you do this, but I just like to put a shot of colour up the centre of the leaf, front and back. So I'm supporting at the back with my fingers and just running the brush up the centre at the front and do the same on the back. Just support it so it doesn't break as you colour. So it only needs a little bit. You could go more to town if you wanted to. Okay, so now we're ready to start assembling. The first thing we need to do is take a 24 gauge or 26 gauge wire. I've cut this one in half. And we want to create a little node so kind of a, a thickened part on the top. That's going to represent the next leaf or bud or flower that's going to grow on this branch. Position the tape nice and stretched at a 90 degree angle to the wire. Flip over the top. That will, because it's stretched, it's released glue, so it will stick to itself. And then you over tape the same area, maybe five or six times, so that you get a wider part. Then make sure your tape is stretched, turn it to an angle and come down the wire about an inch and a half. We can add in our buds now. So this is about an inch and a half. We've left about a centimetre length of 
stem on our bud and tape it in. Don't worry if these move around because you can adjust them in a little while. If you've got different size buds as well, just start with the smallest one. Then bring your next one in. Again, a centimeter on the stem of the bud, having taped down a centimeter on the main stem. A couple of twists and we're ready to put the next one in. Now you'll notice as well that as I'm doing this, we're kind of creating a bit of a zigzag shape and that just makes it more interesting when you're looking at it rather than having everything in a line or things that are kind of pushed round to the back of the wire. Next are the flowers. So just find your smallest flower first if you have got a difference. We've taped down the stem this time about two centimetres so that we've got room to position the flower and the stem is about two centimetres or maybe a centimetre and a half of length of stem so that's grown a bit more as well. A couple of twists so about a centimetre or so in between and then we can add in our next flower again bending the stem at about the two centimetre mark position that on. So again we're working at a zigzag. Tape down a couple of twists, so about this length, about a centimetre and a half, and we're ready to add the leaves in. So if you've got different sized leaves, the smallest ones will go in first. They do have a bit of stem showing on this, about a centimetre's worth. Twist that one round. I'm about to run out of tape, so I'm just going to get a little bit more. I like to work with a small amount of tape and it's half width. For something like this, it's still half width, even though you're putting things together. So here I'm probably going to add the next stem of leaf in about a centimetre down. Keep your knitting as your your taping as neat as possible. So a couple of twists, so we've gone about a centimetre down again, and then we're ready to put the last one in, which is quite nice if you just kind of have it um, down a bit, but also kind of towards the centre to finish it off. So press as you're twisting the tape around the wire. Keep all your wires nice and straight so they don't uh, spiral and keep your tape straight as well, which can be quite a challenge. So come down to where you think will be the length of the stem that you would like and use a pair of wire cutters to trim the edge, the, the bottom. So I'm just gonna come in here. You can come, at, come in at an angle, that looks quite nice. It does expose a little bit of wire end here, which is nice if you cover that up. So just position the tape and wrap that around. Okay, now at this point, we need to just adjust the flowers a little way. So we'll just check to see what we like. Bring these buds a little bit more into play, but I also want to move the wire a little bit at the back. So if you turn it, so you're looking at the back of the flower, and then from the little bud that you've put on, start to bend in a bit of a zigzag as you go down the plant. And that just gives a bit more interest. And just go back to the front and check that you're happy with where all the um, buds have ended up and the flowers have ended up so you can see everything nice and clearly. Okay, and that, is your finished blossom spray. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. There are more to look at on the website. So if you go into www.inspiredcreations.uk.com, you'll see them there. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.